The tale of San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant's death has big characters, big secrets, and big customer bills. First, the characters. There's a watchdog agency, a U.S. senator, a governor, and a state attorney general. The California Public Utilities Commission is the cop on the beat. The problem is, is that they've behaved more as if the FBI had put John Gotti in charge of the organized crime task force. Here's why consumer advocate Charles Langley thinks that. The PUC promised an inquiry in late 2012 into what went wrong at San Onofre. Enter Melanie Darling. She's the judge who presided over the PUC San Onofre investigation. She somehow learned of an incriminating report just as the probe got underway. The report said designers of the San Onofre equipment that leaked the radiation in 2012 knew of flaws and wanted to make changes before it was installed. But they didn't in part because Edison thought the changes would impede its ability to avoid a deeper government review. Judge Darling did a curious thing after finding out about the report. She asked Edison, the subject of the probe, in an email whether that report would ever be made public. Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility attorney John Giesman says that raises ethical questions. Is that that's something that a judge sitting in a contested dispute would rightfully consult with one of the litigants without having all of the other litigants involved in the same communication. Then Judge Darling did another curious thing. She delayed the San Onofre investigation by two years. Now comes the second character in the San Onofre story, Senator Barbara Boxer. In February 2013, someone leaked that same incriminating report on the faulty San Onofre equipment to her. Unlike Judge Darling, she didn't put off a probe. Boxer instead called on federal regulators to immediately open an investigation. The senators put Push for an inquiry set off a flurry of emails at Edison and the PUC, again, the government body charged with oversight of the company. Plans were made to head abroad. In March 2013, Michael Peavy, then president of the PUC, met secretly with an Edison executive in Poland. There, they wrote a framework for a settlement on San Onofre that ultimately handed customers a $3.3 billion bill for the plant shutdown. Again, ratepayer advocate Charles Langley. The Public Utilities Commission took care of Southern California Edison shareholders. They didn't take care of the ratepayers. But in Washington, Senator Boxer still searched for accountability. In May 2013, she said she had evidence of misrepresentation and safety lapses by Edison and asked the Justice Department to launch a criminal investigation. Now, the third character, Governor Jerry Brown. It's alleged that Brown phoned the head of Edison and asked if he was going to, quote, blast the senator. A Brown spokesman denies the governor asked that, but Brown never publicly backed Boxer in her call for a criminal probe of Edison. Remember Judge Darling? Before her retirement this month, she fined Edison almost $17 million for not revealing the secret meeting in Poland until two years later. But she also ended the PUC's investigation of San Onofre. San Diego consumer attorney Mike Aguirre says there are two systems of justice. There's one system for most people, and then there's another system for people that are rich and famous, uh, like Edison and its executives. The PUC's former president, Peavy, may not be so lucky. Investigators are looking into his involvement in the secret Poland meeting, including a plan for Edison to give $25 million to UCLA for greenhouse gas research as part of the San Onofre settlement. That brings us to our final character, California Attorney General Kamala Harris. She's investigating the PUC and has asked for records dealing with San Onofre. The only problem is the PUC hasn't fully complied and Harris hasn't pressed the matter in court. Amita Sharma, KPBS News.